And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Struthiosaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a nodosaurid dinosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Austria, Romania, France, Spain, and Hungary. Just real quick, not to be confused with the ornithomimid Struthiomimus, which was way more bird-like. Yeah. I think I mentioned Struthiosaurus, or you mentioned Struthiosaurus in an earlier episode, and I said nothing could be farther from a ostrich-like. Right, because the <laughs> the name Struthiosaurus means ostrich lizard. Yeah, but it's an ankylosaur. It has to do with the brain cakes. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so it may be one of the most basal ankylosaurs. So yeah, when you're thinking about how it looked. Not really bird-like. It looked somewhat like other notosaurids like Boreal Pelta. Hmm. It walked on four legs. It had these large shoulder spikes. It had an elongate head. The body was covered in armor, but no tail club. And actually, yeah, you're right, Garrett. We did talk about it in episode 274. And when you, as you put it, when we talked about it, it was, quote, like a big tanky dog covered in armor and spikes. <laughs> big tanky dog. <laughs> That's a weird choice that I made. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's in the archives. <laughs> I stand by it, I guess. <laughs> Astruthiosaurus may have been a dwarf dinosaur. It's estimated to be about 6.6 6 to 9.8 feet or 2 to 3 meters long and weighed about 660 pounds or 330 kilograms. And at the time that Struthiosaurus lived, what is now Europe, where it lived, was mostly islands. In 2017, Norbert Frotzler, in a preprint paper, reconstructed Struthiosaurus austriacus. That's the type species. It was part of the 650th anniversary celebrations of the University of Vienna. This was back in 2015 when they celebrated. Oof. Yeah. Stuff in Europe is so old compared to the U.S. But all so young compared to dinosaurs. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think I remember why I called it a dog mm -hmm. now, because you said it was basal. Mm -hmm. I think it's got longer legs than you see on later ankylosaurs, so it's mm. got more of like a dog-like posture. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just to add to your... Doubling down. Yep. Now, Fratzler was asked to prepare a diagram of Struthiosaurus and presented the reconstruction at the anniversary celebration, and then the paper was an explanation of that reconstruction. And he described Struthiosaurus as, quote, conspicuously small, end quote, with a long neck, and quote, probably it was feeding mainly on ants and termites, at least when a juvenile animal, end quote. Hmm. So kind of interesting to think about. The type species, as I mentioned, is Struthiosaurus austriacus. Edward Seuss, a geologist, found a dinosaur tooth back in 1859 at a coal mine in Austria on top of a stone pile. They tried to find more fossils, and eventually they found a thin marl layer with a lot of bones in a freshwater deposit. It's part of the what's now known as the Grunbach Formation. The fossils are stored at the Museum of the University of Vienna, and they weren't studied until 1870. Emmanuel Bunzel studied the fossils and then named a few new dinosaurs, including Struthiosaurus, based on part of the skull and brain case, and he named Struthiosaurus in 1871. Like I mentioned, that genus name, Struthiosaurus, means ostrich lizard, and it refers to the bird likeness of the brain case. Yeah, you got to name it based on what you find. Yep. And unfortunately, <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> Sometimes that can be very misleading later on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the species name, Austriacus, refers to the provenance from Austria where the fossils were found. Bunzel also described other Struthiosaurus fossils and osteoderms, but he referred them to Scolidosaurus and Hylaeosaurus. Some other good ankylosaurs. Yeah. Uh, he also described rib fragments that he thought were from a giant lizard because they had these double-headed ribs, which means more joints between the ribs and vertebrae, and therefore the rib cage could be more mobile. And he named that Danubiosaurus anseps after the Danube River. And that name is a nod to Mosasaurus, which was named after the River Mos, which I didn't realize Mosasaurus was named after a river, but, you know, not a dinosaur, so. Yeah. <laughs> I like Danubosaurus. Yes, well, all those bones turned out to be from Struthiosaurus. Oh, no. So now we can't use Danubosaurus. I don't think so. Maybe without the O. Maybe it can just be Danubosaurus. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this sounds cool. 
Bunzel knew that the brain case was from a reptile, but the brain case was different from lizards and crocodiles. It was low, compact, and had a gradual curve to the skull roof. Hmm. So he thought the brain case could be from a dinosaur, but he wasn't sure. And he thought it might be a bird based on how the bones are rounded and fused. So he sent a drawing and description to Thomas Huxley, who agreed that it was a bird. (laughs) Oh, that's delightful. Since Thomas Huxley was one of the early birds are dinosaurs guys. Yeah. And this has happened in the late 1800s when everyone's debating that. Yep. And Bunzel wrote in his description of the fossils, quote, with time, it might also be possible to create an order ornithocephala bird heads and <laughs> ornithocephala <laughs> the bird brained ones <laughs> yep now in bunzel's defense it was hard to know that this was an ankylosaur brain case at the time because it was the first one described and there were only fragments so the skull seemed to be lightly built bunzel didn't really have osteoderms either when he described the fossils yeah you got to work with what you got yep Now, Nopsha in 1902 found that it was an ankylosaur, and in 1978, Walter Coombs said that it was a notosaurid. At least three individuals of different ages of Struthiosaurus were found in Austria, according to Superbiola and Galton in 2001. Hmm. There used to be many species of Struthiosaurus based on fragmentary fossils and material that didn't have unique features, also known as non-diagnostic. And then there were also animals that later we found out were Struthiosaurus, and that includes Danubiosaurus, but also some other animals like Pleuropeltis and Hoplosaurus. In 1881, Seeley examined Bunzel's fossils and found many of the bones, plates, and teeth were part of one dinosaur, which he named Kratomus, and that means mighty shoulder. (laughs) Nopsha later synonymized Kratomus with Struthiosaurus. That's a cool meaning too, because yep. those shoulders, they got those huge spikes sticking out of them. That's it's true. A, it's a solid name, but I guess also one that we're not going to be using. In- well, yeah, it turned out to be part of Struthiosaurus. So there are three valid species of Struthiosaurus today. There's Struthiosaurus austriacus, Struthiosaurus transylvanicus, which was named by Nopsha in 1915, and Struthiosaurus languidocensis, which was named in 2003 by Garcia and Peretta Superbiola. In 2003, when they described Struthiosaurus languidocensis, it was based on a partial skeleton of an adult that was found in southern France back in 1998. The species name refers to the region where the fossils were found. Struthiosaurus austriacus was smaller than Struthiosaurus transylvanicus, and it had shorter neck vertebrae, just talking a little bit about what makes these species different. Struthiosaurus langdosensis had flatter dorsal vertebrae and a different shaped ischium or pelvis. We briefly mentioned Struthiosaurus in episode 400 when we talked about all the Hatseg dinosaurs. However, there's been some debate on Struthiosaurus transylvanicus, and sometimes the Struthiosaurus is referred to in quotes. Nopsha, when he described it, included parts of the skull vertebrae, parts of the shoulder and armor. In 1997, Superbiola and Galton said that the Struthiosaurus transylvanicus may be valid, but the fossils are probably inadequate to show that it's different from Struthiosaurus austriacus. And there's been debate on even the type species because Coombs and Marianska considered Struthiosaurus austriacus to be a nomum dubium. In 2013, Osai and Pronvi tentatively assigned a humerus, an arm bone, of an adult dinosaur. They knew it was an adult based on histology that was found in Hungary to Struthiosaurus. And this find helped show that there were two nodosaurs that lived alongside each other in that area, which means that there was more diversity in European ankylosaurs than we previously thought. Hooray! Yeah. The other nodosaur is Hungarosaurus, and that was almost twice the size of Struthiosaurus. We saw that one in the museum in Hungary. That was a pretty cool one. Yeah. And pretty large from what I remember. Mm Mm-hmm. We've also talked about Struthiosaurus in episode 374 because there was a paper published last year by Marco Schott and others, and this is about the uh, Struthiosaurus being 
what were the headlines? It was like slow and oh, couldn't yeah. really hear. Yeah. Yeah. Deaf and slow moving or something like that or uncoordinated. Yeah. <laughs> so in the paper for the study, they reexamined the holotype brain case of Struthiosaurus using micro CT scanning, just as a quick recap. And Struthiosaurus had relatively short semicircular canals in the inner ear. And large semicircular canals make animals better at balancing and more sensitive to head movements. Struthiosaurus also didn't have a flocular recess, and that helps you stabilize your vision when you're moving your head, and it's linked to motor control. And it had the shortest cochlear duct of any known dinosaur, which probably means it couldn't hear very well, maybe a little better than a turtle. The author's also found lots of blood cells around the brain, which helps show that it may have used extra blood vessels to cool down their brains. So taken all together, it means Struthiosaurus probably spent a lot of its time alone eating, and it wasn't very active. It was just minding its own business. It was. <laughs> we've also talked about Struthiosaurus in episode 377. So I think we've talked about it, what, three other episodes? <laughs> yeah, it comes up. <laughs> yeah. Wayne, you, Garrett, you pondered if it could rely on infrasound to hear. The answer and, is no. Yeah, because Struthiosaurus could hear down to about 300 hertz, which is around middle C on a piano. Mm -hmm. And under 20 hertz is considered infrasound. So yeah, no, Struthiosaurus couldn't do it. But as you mentioned, elephants and blue whales can. They got much better ears. Yep. So there we go. Struthiosaurus, the name means ostrich, but it's really... Nothing like an ostrich. Yeah, it's too bad it didn't. We didn't get that name that meant like impressive shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> this it was so fitting for a notosaur. Instead, we got bird lizard or ostrich <laughs> lizard, which it just isn't. Well, it you know that's what happens when it's one of the earlier fossils found, and there's only fragments. Yeah, that's true. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.